Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Brass Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Christian. Alongside me is... Espen. And today we're going to be talking about another one of my pet CDH decks, and that's Selvala Brostorm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very, <laughs> very interesting deck. So, start off, what's the one question we always ask, Espen? What is the power level of the deck, Christian? And, you know, it's a, it's a CDH deck, and that being said... It bottoms at a nine. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a super fast combo uh, CDH deck. It's the type of deck I like playing, a very proactive game plan where you're always trying to do something. And, well, I'd say, it, like I said, it bottoms at a nine. It, you could mm -hmm. probably get a 9.5. Again, it's really hard to get to that 10 unless you're playing, like, Flash Hulk or a five-color mm -hmm. CDH deck. I mean, yeah. and you're, you're, you're restricted to Mono Green, which Mono Green is arguably the second strongest color in EDH mm -hmm. in general because, well, we'll see when we get to it. Mm -hmm. So we just want to let you guys know that the deck list, as all of our deck lists that we talk about, is going to be in the description box below. Mm -hmm. Now, Rishin, um, we always go over this at, at the beginning, but uh, could you explain or elaborate some of the basic strategies and when you want to play this deck? So the archetype of this deck, it's... It's it's kind of weird. It's kind of like a storm deck. Mm -hmm. Hence the title of the deck on the deck list database, Salvala Bro Storm. All but right. like the storm count doesn't really matter. It's it's a storm deck in the sense that in one turn you're doing a lot. Mm -hmm. You're gonna cast a bunch of spells, you're gonna you're gonna go off, and you're gonna have this big explosive spell slinging turn. And that's pretty much the base of the deck, the archetype. It's mm. it's it's like a storm deck, but it doesn't matter about the storm count. I mean, it's fun to do that in green. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but and your strategy is pretty much you're you're just trying to build up a huge board and then cast and then cast a big payoff spell mm -hmm. or generate a bunch of mana. We'll get into that in just a moment. Mm -hmm. And so then a, the, your second question: When is this appropriate to play? And we say this every CDH deck list, but we feel like we have to keep saying it just. Just because it's it's important to us to remind ourselves this each time because you know we can we sometimes fall in the complacent of oh well we'll just play our CDH decks whenever yeah and, you know it's while as I said before in previous videos I like playing the quick win games but this recently with the group that we play with down here in this area mm -hmm. these guys don't like to continue playing after someone wins they like to scoop up and go to the next game yeah whereas our group at, back in our hometown is kind of more like okay well you've won we can mm -hmm. keep playing and either way is wrong to play and yeah. I'm just having to I, especially me I'm trying to get used to the the whole once I win everyone else is just gonna scoop up their cards so mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, this is appropriate to play with your other CDH decks. Um, mm. I think it could be fine with like sevens and eights, depending on the color. Mm. You know, you're probably you're probably gonna stand a pretty good chance against the sevens or eights. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of counter spells. You know, that could potentially hinder you just a slight bit. But yeah, you know, it's one of those things where you just have to you have to really know what the other decks are gonna be. And against another CDH deck, I think that's perfectly fine. I think oh, yeah. I don't think I think it's just a matter of whoever goes off first, as in most CDH games, or if the stacks player, control player can establish <laughs> that ever so hard to do uh, strong board presence, you know. Mm -hmm. And we just want to stress that CDH is at this point. It's kind of the 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 stepchild of the EDH format, I feel. I think so. It kind of feels like, you know, we're kind of overlooked at some points in time where For sure. where when it comes to rules, and I think it was even said, I think I seen it in a Twitter post that that uh the playgroup or the uh rules committee didn't even consider uh C E D H at all wow. when considering rules bans, and it's like wow, like That's crazy. And Saffron Olive recently tweeted out that why not just make CDH its own format per se and have its own separate ban list? And I think that's perfectly Ooh. reasonable. I think we should do that because to to impose a ban list on both on both and while they're the same like singleton format in, in a way, they are they're different formats, mm -hmm. totally different styles. Of totally playing. different, yeah, and. Like, what you're trying to do in CDH is not what you're trying to do in EDH for the most part. Because you're not trying, in EDH, you're trying to start 
develop a board, play for the late game. And CDH, it's mm -hmm. usually about, unless you're playing that controller stacks game, it's about, can I go off quick? Can I establish the board position to win? And and I feel like there's also another very important thing where, like, CDH, of course, it is competitive. You are trying to win. Yeah. Where Commander, which is uh, what I, they're both the same thing, but I like to play casually mm -hmm. uh, just because it's a very fun social game. You can politic, yeah. you can like make deals, you can like team up, go against, fight against like a whole pod. And like, like it just varies on how you want to play. If you want to like win and like, like, and be competitive, CDH is that place. But if you're more like, I want to play, I want to develop my board do some insane powerful things make deals and it's just really cool it's all about the social contract mm -hmm. of both games and the social contract's a lot different you know you're not going to politic very effectively in cdh because mm -hmm. you know no one's going to just let you you're not going to talk anyone let you have your strong combo piece because that's what's going to win you the game so mm -hmm. and i think Selvala, and i think we bring this up and i know this is slightly off the topic of selvala but i think this is important to know especially for decks like Salvala, mm -hmm. where it's, it's again, one of these really, really powerful CDH decks, and it's hard to it's hard to talk about this in the scope of regular EDH because mm -hmm. I've, I've tested a fair bit of testing of this deck with the regular EDH decks, and it's almost like I'm on a whole other field, and, like, they can hold out for, I mean, a fair bit of time, but mm -hmm. it's just a matter of time to where I get my combo or I just go off. And it, it almost doesn't seem fair most of the time. Yeah. You know, it feels like, and even if it's a seven or an eight, like, I think we think that eights and nines are very close. I don't think so at all. I think eights and nines are, like, strong decks with strong synergies. Mm -hmm. I think nines and tens are competitive. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, Yeah, we need to make that distinction. Go, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, uh, no, I was going to say, like, and, and when we saw this, like, uh, in all of our gameplay, I mean, Tassiger, uh, we would play, and uh, I had all the kill spells, the counter spells, keeping, keeping Savala off the board. But in the end, it just, like, didn't matter. Just, and though my deck is CEDH, or at least it is close to it, is like, like you said, it's a 7 or an 8. But even then, I just kind of felt, like, overwhelmed because I'm just, like, wow. And, and just, like, the amount of power that, like, Mono Green can do, and especially with that commander, it's just insane. I think people fall into the trap of thinking that 7s and 8s can easily compete with nines and tens. Mm -hmm. And like, and I, it's hard to quantify these with numbers sometimes because, you know, eight sounds very close to nine. And, you know, eight can put up a good game. Mm -hmm. I'm just like a nine, and like a nine or ten CDH deck is, it's hard to really explain like how more powerful. And like with Silvala, we've done Moldrotha, mm -hmm. we've done Anya. I, I still think like, no I, I think that them as a, as a high nine can pretty much easily take down a high eight. I don't think there's much competition in there. No. And so we just want to stress, we, we talk about this because we want to stress that you should only play these with the other CDH decks. And if your group says, okay, because that's the main part is we want to, we, we started this platform to kind of give a place to promote CDH and mm -hmm. to promote commander. And, you know, we're not the only ones doing it, Yeah, but we, we just want to make sure that people know, like, hey, CDH is, it, you know, I will say here, it should be its own format. It should have its own ban list. And I think that would solve a lot of the problems with the format is if it had its own unique ban list. Oh, for sure. Now, now um, moving back onto uh, Selvala, um, this is, like you said, another pet deck. Uh, can you uh, tell us what you enjoy most about the deck? I think the best part about this deck is the the fun and fast gameplay. And that's what I like. I think I've said this over and over again in a true? lot of the in like the mm -hmm. Ani episode and all the episodes. I like digging to a fun, fast end to a game. I like <laughs> I like ending a game just as fast as it starts. Yeah. I think that's the most fun for me because I get bored playing the long games. Mm -hmm. And Silvala, so you know, she's she's the combo is fragile in the sense that yes it can be responded to but i think mm -hmm. once you set get that strong board i mean 
I think it's pre- and I like those decks. What's well, once you establish the combo and have demonstrated mm-hmm. it, it's like, yeah, that's a cute kill spell. I'll just respond with all this mana that I have on the stack and it's almost it's really hard to stop the combo and that's the kind of decks that mm-hmm. I like is you establish a strong board presence and a strong combo and then you can do the fun stuff after you know the the combos the dirty work and that's that's what I really like about this deck is the really fun fast paced gameplay and mm-hmm. that she can she wins in a different way than Anya and I really like mm-hmm. that too as I like I like that Anya has its own unique kind of way of winning and Salvala has its own unique way of winning. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's very, very fun to, we'll get into it with the discussion. We'll go here in just a minute, but mm-hmm. you know, she is a very, very fun commander and for CDH. And mm-hmm. I would say she, she takes the cake as all of our commanders do. This is, this is very true. Now, now, before we move on any further, uh, uh, we would love to encourage you guys to like, share, and subscribe, and comment on, on this video. It, it means the world to us, and we want you guys to, to come along with us as we progress and grow. And we just want to share our knowledge uh, of CEDH with you, and, and also hear back from you as well. Yeah, and just another quick note, I know we... We didn't really talk about this before the episode, but I know we we did mention it is mm-hmm. Magic Fest Detroit's right around the corner. Ah, yes, it, it is. From when this episode goes up, and oh, happy Valentine's Day to you guys. Oh, all yep. you all you <laughs> lovebirds out there, happy Valentine's <laughs> Day. But it's about a month away exactly when this video releases, and yeah. we're gonna be there. We'd love to play CDH with you guys, or just Commander. I mean, we'll have a good mix of casual and competitive. So mm-hmm. if you see us at the tables, come up and say hi and. We love to play. We love to play. And we'll, we'll have some swag to give out, and mm-hmm. and we will be exclusively playing. Uh, or or we plan on playing in the command zone, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we'll be in the command zone, and mm-hmm. you know it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So I think we should move to the body of this of this episode and mm-hmm. start getting onto it. So Christian, uh, to you, we, we've been talking about Selvala, but for some of those that don't know who she is, can you uh, elaborate on that? So yeah, um, hopefully it's very apparent from the thumbnail of this video that what Salvala I'm talking about, but just to give a little Mm in-depth. So we're talking about the Mono Green Salvala, which is Salvala Heart of the Wilds. She's a one colorless, two green. She's a legendary creature elf scout. She's a two three. Whenever another creature enters a battlefield, its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature's power. And yeah, that's pretty close. Aesthetic ability. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, very, very good. And then she also has a second ability. It's a green and tap. Hmm. Add X mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So that's where the uh, the real fun begins with her. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. the draw trigger is sweet, gives you a bonus card, but mm-hmm. that's when it comes. And so Savala, in general, super sweet. I mean... Mm-hmm. I've seen a fair bit of, like, 7s and 8s built out of her. I think this is, like, the, and I just wanted to play her in her ideal sense. I feel mm-hmm. like this is. It's unbelievably strong. She's a mm-hmm. very, very fun to play. And so let's move to the discussion about the deck. Mm-hmm. So, again, we're going to stop teaching you guys about the combo. You know, <laughs> we, we did it in a few, few episodes, but we're starting to kind of break that habit because we just want to get it out of the way and let you guys know, here's how it wins. Or here's how it generates its value. Mm -hmm. So for this combo, you're going to start off, you're going to need Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a Phyrexian Dreadnought. And then you're going to need one of two of these cards. You'll need Staff of Domination or Umbral Mantle. So to begin, you're going to get your Selvala out early. You're going to cast your Staff of Domination or your Umbral Mantle the next turn. And then hopefully you have the fast mana. You'll, You'll play Phyrexian Dreadnought. So let's go ahead and read them. So you're going to start with Savala out, and we've already read her. So let's say you want to do Staff of Domination. So Staff of Domination is a three colorless mana, or three generic mana, I would say, Mm -hmm. for an artifact. One mana, untap Staff of Domination. Two mana and tap, you gain one life. Three mana and tap, untap target creature. Hmm. Four mana and tap, tap target creature. Five mana and tap, draw a card. Hmm. So, yeah, very, very powerful abilities. And mm-hmm. I think it's I think you can see where this is going if if you know this deck. And we'll mm-hmm. go ahead and talk about Umber Mantle. Umber Mantle is also a three three color, or a three generic mana artifact equipment. It has equip creature has three mana untap, 
this creature gets plus two, plus two, and out of turn. And its equip cost is zero. So you play one of these two. So we'll say in the in the sake in the for the sake of, of keeping the simple staff of domination. Mm -hmm. You play your Savali. You play your staff of domination. You have a little bit of mana left over. You're gonna play your Phyrexian Dreadnought. Now Phyrexian Dreadnought is a one generic mana artifact creature. He's a twelve twelve. He has Trample. When Phyrexian Dreadnought comes into play, sacrifice any number of creatures with total power 12 or more, or destroy Phyrexian Dreadnought. So, yeah, it sounds kind of rough, mm -hmm. but there's a beautiful thing about the stack in Magic the Gathering. I'm sure you've heard of it if you're watching CDH decks. Yes. So what you're going to do is you're going to, you have your Staff of Domination, you have your Salvala. You're going to play your Phyrexian Dreadnought. Mm -hmm. It's going to enter. Its ability is going to go on the stack. You're going to pay a green mana. You're going to tap Salvala. You're going to add 12 mana to your mana pool. I mean, that's pretty good value right away. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to go ahead. You're going to pay three of that mana. You're going to tap Staff of Domination. You're going to untap Salvala. So now what? You have nine mana left. Yep. Pay one mana, untap Staff of Domination. Seven. Oh, it's only one mana. Oh, it's yeah. Seven. Yeah. 12 minus three, nine minus one. Oh, eight. eight. Yeah. Eight mana. Pay eight one. Mana. <laughs> 12 more mana. Stab Staff. Untap Salvala. Mm -hmm. You've established infinite mana. Wow. With with and you still have a Phyrexian Dreadnought trigger on the stag, which he will inevitably die, but and like this this is really hard to respond to because like once you get this going, like any kill spell really doesn't really matter. Because you can always pay that one to untap the staff of domination. And like it's like, okay, well, your Savala's tapped. I'm gonna uh well, we'll just say for the let's say you just have Fatal Push online, it's revolt. You're going to Fatal Push Heart Salvala. Okay, well, I'm going to pay one and tap Staff. I'm going to pay three to untap Salvala, and I'm just going to do it all in response again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this combo is really, really difficult to respond to. You mm -hmm. have all this... And the same works with Umbral Mantle. Umbral Mantle will be equipped to Salvala. Mm -hmm. And this one even takes, even takes up less mana, because you're only ever paying three. You pay one to tap, and you pay three to untap, and she just gets bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. every time you do that. And, like, you don't even have to worry about paying the four, four total mana for uh, Staff of Domination. You're just paying four total for Umbral Mantle and Salvala. Wow. So you've you've played this combo, and you've established your infinite mana. Well, you need some payoffs for this mana. So, mm -hmm. Espen, what are some of the what are some of the payoffs for for getting all of this mana? So the first payoff for Salvala, and with all this like infinite mana yeah. is weird harvest for x and green green it is a sorcery each player may search his or her library for up to x creature cards reveal those cards and put them into his or her hand then each player who searched his or her library this way shuffles it so yes it, it allows everyone to, to to find creatures but you're doing this on your turn when you have all this mana open so you're just like yeah i'm gonna grab every creature in my deck and then you just have a huge board. That's, and then uh, then you can draw cards from like different creatures' abilities, and then yeah. your board gets very, very scary. And it just helps you build a really big board presence. And just like, even with that card alone, it's just kind of like, okay, you just built up your board really, really huge with infinite mana. That is a little scary. Yeah. A little, or very much scary. And... The second card uh, that is a payoff is Finale of Devastation, which is one of your main uh, win conditions in this deck. It is, again, X green green for a sorcery. Search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. If you searched your library this way, shuffle it. If X is 10 or more, creatures you control get plus X plus X and gain haste until end of turn. So you cast that weird harvest. You have all those creatures. Yeah, they can't attack. Sad. But then you play finale devastation for like what? A billion. A billion. And yeah. and then all your creatures get plus a billion and plus a billion. And then you have a a billion and one and a billion and one uh arbor elf. Yeah. And then that elf gets really, really scary and I may or may not have tied to it. And <laughs> it was very, very painful. Yeah. And just seeing that happen, just really cool. And then one of my favorite ways to win this deck is with Walking Ballista. We've mentioned it in, in actually our, our last video, or yeah. a couple videos ago. Uh, for XX, it is an artifact creature construct, and it enters the battlefield with X one counters on it. Pay for mana, put one counter on it. 
and then remove a 1-1 counter from Walking Ballista that deals 1 damage to any target. So you put you put 6 billion mana into Walking Ballista, and then it gets 3 billion 1-1 counters. I'm, a, I'm gonna deal a billion damage to each of my opponents. Huh? And that's just a really, really bad f like feel when you're uh, playing against it, because you're like, like, oh, yay, you got a bunch of mana, and then I died to a very big uh, uh, piece of metal. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're either going big with one creature, or you're going wide with a bunch. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, you have some flexibility with that. And it's nice, because the weird harvest, like, it doesn't put anything into play, so you can mm -hmm. set up that walking ballista very, very reasonably. Yeah, f yeah, for sure. And you don't need, right, especially for a re weird harvest, you don't need to just win r right away with it. You can also use it, like, earlier on, just to, mm -hmm. just to like find creatures for yourself and um there are also some uh important creatures that you can find with this uh what are some of those important christians are um, <laughs> important creatures yeah. i'm sorry well, I'm well thank you us but i'm very important i'd like to think oh yes of course <laughs> but so some of the important creatures with the stack and so a couple of these creatures are kind of repetitive with their abilities but mm -hmm. i think they're important because they help you generate that mana, let's say if you don't have the Staff of Domination mm -hmm. or the Umbral Mantle. They just help you dig a little further. So the first creature we're going to talk about is Kyrian Ranger. It's a 1 green, 1 1 elf. You return a forest you control to its owner's hand, untap mm -hmm. target creature, and you can use this ability only once each turn. Mm -hmm. So you're going to return your forest, you're going to untap your Salvala, and you're going to you're gonna get another Salvala activation out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean... That's kind of what your the point of this deck is, is to activate mm -hmm. Selvala. So again, very, very simple creature. Very simple creature. Mm -hmm. And it's, and this next creature has a similar effect to Kyrian Ranger. It's mm -hmm. Scrib Ranger. Scrib Ranger is a one colorless and a green creature fairy. It's a one one. It has flash. And for those of you that don't know what flash does, I'll just read the rules text here. You may play this spell at any time you could play an instant. Mm -hmm. So anytime you want to mm -hmm. cast a spell, you can cast it. Mm -hmm. It has flying, protection from blue, mm -hmm. and it does the exact same thing Kyrian Ranger does. Return a force you control to its owner's hand, untap target creature, and you can play this ability only once each turn. So, again, you have you have this out, you return a forest, you get another Selvala activation, you have both out. That's two more Selvala activations. Mm -hmm. And you're going to notice a theme with all these cards, especially That's with this third card. And this is one of my personal favorites in here because this can... This, yeah. uh, this, I mean, this resets either your Scrib Ranger or your Kyrian Ranger. This card is Wirewood Symbiote. Mm -hmm. It's a one green, one one creature insect. You return an elf you control to its owner's hand on tap target creature. This ability only once each turn. Again, you have all that mana. You're going to return, let's say, your Kyrian Ranger mm -hmm. to your hand. And then you untap Selvala. You activate Selvala. You have a bunch more mana. You replay the Kyrian Ranger. And if you have another forest, Return a forest to your hand, untap hmm. that Savala, and there's another Savala activation. That's really nice. You, you really, these effects are very redundant, but these are important because you're not always going to have, you know, the games, the games, you want them to come down to the Staff of Domination and mm -hmm. the Umbral Mantle, but you're not always guaranteed to get them. So mm -hmm. you need other ways to generate some value and get some big mana off of Savala. And these important creatures are just a couple of ways that you could say, hey, look, uh, I am starting to sort of a little bit of redundancy mm -hmm. with my important creatures. And so this next section, we said this in the last video, it's redundant, but these are some of the most important cards and we're not running anything unusual in this deck. So Espen, what are some of the mana rocks that, that we have running in this deck? So we are running a few mana rocks. The first one being Mana Crypt, which is a zero mana artifact and at the beginning of your upkeep flip a coin if you lose that the flip mana crypt th deals three damage to you and you can tap it to add two cards to your mana pool so right away great value like like right off the bat you just play it for free because it costs zero and then you uh tap it for two colors and do stuff with that uh -huh. and it's just another it's really good uh fast mana uh in this deck Another fast mana rock is Chromax, another zero mana artifact, and it has imprint. When Chromax comes into play, you may remove a non-artifact, non-land card in your hand from the game, and the remove card is imprinted onto the artifact. When you 
tap, add one mana of any of the imprinted cards colors to your mana pool. So it will always be green as, as long as you, yeah, you always put a green spell under it and it always taps are green, which is really good for the deck because a lot of the deck requires a lot of green mana yep. in order to cast a spell. So in my opinion, it's better than Mana Crypt because Mana yeah. Crypt only taps are colorless, whereas Chromox gets you that green mana, which is so important. Mm -hmm. it, just like uh, Mox Diamond, which is another uh, artifact, fast mana rock in here. It's a zero mana artifact. When Mox Diamond comes into play, choose and discard a land or sacrifice Mox Diamond. Then you just tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So, again, really powerful, in my opinion, better than Mana Crypt. You know, it only taps for one, but it taps for a colored which is super important. And actually very important to cast Savala because she costs one green green, if I'm yep. not mistaken. Yep. And like like Mana Crypt can't 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 help you cast her as fast as these two can. Yep. And just goes to show like how good some of these uh fast mana rocks can be. Yeah, and like I said, we're not running anything unusual. It's pretty much just your basic, hey, here's your CDH mana rocks. Mm -hmm. But they're important nonetheless and to not highlight them, I think would be would be kind of an injustice because they are one of the important parts of your deck. And mm -hmm. you know, playing Savala, you have, and we're not going to really highlight them in this video, but you have a fair amount of mana dorks. And so mm -hmm. these, in combination with your mana dorks, gets out of hand quickly because you're going to have a lot of mana really, very quickly. Well, and so, sure. and so going forward, this next section are some of the important enchantments of this deck. Mm -hmm. And we excluded one enchantment that is also very important, but we'll get to that. I'll get to my reasons for excluding that at the end here. Mm -hmm. So to start off, we have one of my personal favorites, uh, sack outlets in the deck, and that's Greater Good. Mm -hmm. For two green green, it's an enchantment. Sacrifice a creature. Draw cards to go to the sacrifice creature's power, then discard three cards. So you have Greater Good out. And, you know, that Phyrexian Dreadnought it has to, is probably going to have to get sacrificed to itself. So you just sacrifice it to the greater good. Now mm. you've drawn 12 cards and you can disc you're discarding three of them. That's pretty good. That's I mean, amazing. Seeing 12 new cards is it's it's so it's so valuable to to see such such importance. I mean, like you're going to draw mm. likely you're like all the cards in this deck do something that are creatures or non-creatures and just seeing 12 more cards that could potentially help sculpt you to the win of the game is very, very, very valuable. And so Greater mm -hmm. Good, I think, is one of the one of the MVPs of this deck. Oh, yeah. And so this next card I wanted to highlight because it's also another card advantage card. Um, I have an older copy in here. So I'm gonna try to explain after I after I read this. And this card is Sylvan Library. Mm -hmm. It's an enchantment for one colorless and a green. So Sylvan Library is draw two cards. So you, I believe you draw, yeah, you draw two cards in addition to your draw for turn. Mm -hmm. Then choose any two of those cards in your hand drawn this, drawn this turn. For each of those cards, pay for life or put that card back on top of your library. Uh, use this ability only during your draw phase and only once each turn. Well, that doesn't matter because it just triggers in your draw phase anyways. Mm -hmm. And this copy of Summon Library is older, so it's got the zero activation cost, which it doesn't have that anymore. It just happens on your draw phase. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, pretty, pretty simple. During your draw phase, you're gonna you're gonna see two additional cards, mm -hmm. and if you want both of them, that's eight life, and I think that's perfectly fine because that's mm -hmm. two more cards in your hand, and it just digs you deeper and deeper. And that's my favorite part about CEDH is digging and finding yeah. that payoff and kind of finding your way to win the game. And so we kind of have a funny story about this next enchantment, and this is a very very common enchantment <laughs> for green decks. This is Carpet of Flowers. It's a one green man enchantment. During your main phase, you may add up to X man of any one color to your mana pool, where X is the number of islands target opponent controls. And so, distinction, this only happens during your first main phase. I know it says main phase, but I know there's there's this weird thing. It's been errata. It's, mm -hmm. it's only during your first main phase. Yeah. So, we were playing a game with, with your roommate mm -hmm. and... Our friend from uh, Radman Alters, who is a phenomenal alterist. Yeah. And, well, I had one forest, but I had Carpet of Flowers. And it's, we were playing, you know, we are playing a mix of CEDH and EDH decks. Mm -hmm. I was pretty much out of the game. Like, you know, you guys effectively kept Salvador, I couldn't find any more mana. But you guys kept playing Islands. 
And eventually, I think I maxed out of six mana. I was getting six additional green mana yeah. on each of my main, like on my first main phase each time. And it was, it kept me in the game and it kept me going because That's insane. It, it's, it's six additional mana. I mean, and it's only target opponent. So mm-hmm. I targeted, I think it was you, Espen, who had the, who had the most islands that game. I'm like, yeah, I'll just target yeah. Espen each time and I'll have six more green. You're welcome. And yeah. <laughs> It kept me in the game, and I ended up winning that game because, you know, well, your roommate wanted the game to end and pretty much bounced the piece that was oppressing me. It was getting late there. <laughs> yeah, it was getting late. It was about midnight at Pandemonium Games, so we uh-huh. were like, yeah, let's, uh, Nick's, Nick's just like, yeah, let's just end the game. Yeah. This game has been aggressively mediocre, so. <laughs> as as he would say. As he would say. <laughs> but he, uh. He ended up bouncing something that was oppressing me. Uh, it was a craft digger's cage. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, well, I have all this mana now. And I'm just going to try to win the game. And I ended up pulling it all together and winning the game that turn. And so Carpet of Flowers is an all-star card. Because blue being the best color in probably EDH and CDH, you know, it's likely that someone is going to be playing at least a couple of islands mm-hmm. and even a, just a couple more mana. That's, that's a couple more additional mana and it doesn't cost you anything to use that mana. Yeah, so, exactly. It's great, it's great card. Really good. And so Espen, this section I think is very important as well. Mm-hmm. And we chose a more of an interesting one that you'll talk about because I wanted to kind of change it up from the basics that are in this deck. Mm-hmm. And so Espen, you're going to handle the tutors. So mm-hmm. why don't you tell me about a little bit about the tutors? So the, First tutor we have in this deck is Court of Calling. For X, green, green, green is an instant, and it has Convoke, which, I'll read the rules text, each creature you tap while playing the spell reduces its cost by one, or by one mana of that creature's color. So, like, if you do Court of Calling, you tap one creature, you can do Court of Calling for one. Yeah. And Court of Calling says, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less, and put it into play. Then shelf your, your library. So a lot of the times when I've seen you play this Christian, you always have done it for like one. Yeah. And always to find that uh, Kyrian Ranger or Wirewood Symbiote, which which I think actually like won you those games actually because yeah. you got that one more activation out of Silvala. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, more mana. That's yeah. you just, just a really good, good thing to know. You never want the green player to have a lot of mana. Yeah. It can turn into very, very scary things. Absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, one of the most important ones, I think, is Worldly Tutor. For just one green, it is an instant. You search your library for a creature card, reveal that card to all players. Shuffle your library and put the revealed card back on top of it. So it doesn't go to your hand, but like... There are a few draw effects in Savala and also off of Savala's ability. If you just like play a creature that has the most power among all the creatures on the board, you get to draw that card and then keep on going off. So like say like turn one, you don't really have much. Well, at the end of the person to your right's turn, you just go um worldly tutor and you just find something to set yourself up to for your next turn. So then you can start like get applying pressure and starting to yep. dig for your uh, cards. And then this one was interesting when you when you well, I saw this on the script I was like huh okay but it makes sense uh, it is tooth and nail for five for five generic mana and green green so it is seven mana it is a sorcery and it says choose one search your library for up to two creature cards reveal them put them into your hand then shuffle your library which is pretty good or put up to two creature cards from your hand into play so kind of seems weird to to choose one or the other but in the very bottom it says entwine for two mana which which says choose both if you play pay the entwine cost now a nine mana sounds a lot but with selvala out it's that is that is like child's play yeah to get it it's very easy to just go yeah i cast um Frexton dreadnought or or one of my other uh big creatures and you just go yeah i'm gonna cast tooth and nail and then you find um you can find even Frex and Dreadnought or other creatures as well, yeah. or utility creatures uh, to, to help you progress through the game, or whatever you need, really. And I just find that card, like, very, very interesting to see in here. But it makes sense. It costs a lot of mana, but that's what this deck does. It generates a lot of mana very quickly and very efficiently. Yeah. Uh, 
And though we can look for our combo, uh, we still have to protect our combo. Uh, how are some ways in this deck that we can protect the combo, Christian? So one of these cards is going to be redundant as it's probably mm -hmm. the most popular green protection spell, but we'll get to that as a second card here. Mm -hmm. So first we're going to start off with its earlier ancestor. First card I'd like to talk about is Autumn's Veil. Vale. Mm -hmm. It's one green mana for an instant. Spells you control can't be countered by blue or black spells this turn, and creatures you control can't be the targets of blue or black spells this turn. So, yeah, that's fine. Because those are two, and again, two of the other most popular colors in CEDH are blue and black. Mm -hmm. And making all your stuff uncounterable and untargetable by those colors is, I mean, it's pretty, pretty clutch. Yeah. That's pretty clutch. It's, it's very good. And this is the ancestor to the next card I want to talk about, which is, well, some would say it's the best card in, it's the best, one of the best protection spells for green that green's ever got. Mm -hmm. And that's Veil of Summer. So I'm sure you all know what this is. It's one green for an instant. Draw a card if an opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control can't be countered mm -hmm. this turn. And you and permanents you control gain hexproof from blue and from black until end of turn. A souped up autumn veil. You get to eat, it replaces itself with the draw mm -hmm. and it does the same thing autumn veil does. You can't your spells can't be countered and you have the hexproof from blue or black. Very, very, very valuable. I mean, mm -hmm. the amount of times that this has saved me during that game in which Nick pretty much let me win or, well, enabled me to start the combo and start to win, mm -hmm. he had a negate in hand and I was like, okay, well, that's pretty cute. I'm going to Veil of Summer and you guys are just <laughs> going to sit there and watch me play. And you were playing Tassiger mm -hmm. and uh, Radman Alters was playing, he was playing a Layla, I think, which I mm -hmm. guess he could have had a white removal, but he was tapped out, yeah. so it didn't really matter, which... Veil of Summer and Autumn Veil, two premium mm -hmm. protection spells. And some people would actually go even farther to say that Veil of Summer is just a one mana uh, cryptic command. Yeah. Draw a card and myself can't be countered, so your counter spell is countered per se. So very, it's just like, oh, I mean, green has very, a very, very nice tool. Very, very valuable card. Yeah. And so the final, the final card I wanted to talk about today, which is another interesting. Uh, protection spell and this is mm -hmm. mainly for Salvala. it's a vines of vast wood mm -hmm. it's a one green instant and it's got kicker for a green and you and for kicker reads you may pay an additional green as you cast a spell mm -hmm. so it says target creature can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control this turn Ooh. gains hexproof mm -hmm. if vines of vast wood was kicked that creature gets plus four plus four another turn which okay that's fine a little bit less valuable but it can be good in situations where you just need a little bit more mana. Let's say you don't have Dreadnought, but you have another big creature and you want to produce a little more mana. Well, I'll kick a Vines and make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. But it's mainly in here to protect your Savala for a green mana. Mm -hmm. Very, very good card. And you just, Savala is very, very prone to getting removed. You just want any way to protect her that you can have. Yeah. And so, Espen, this next section is entitled Good Random Cards. And I know you we joked about you joked about one of them before the episode, but I think you see why it's good. So what what are some of the good random cards in this deck? So the first one I'd like to cover is Sylvan Safekeeper. For one green, it is a creature wizard. And it is a one one. Sacrifice a land, target creature you control can't be the target of spells or abilities this turn. Which, yes, sacrificing lands is not ideal, but with Salvala, you most of the time don't really need many lands like like Christian said. They're the game the other day he won with like one or two three maybe even that lands so like it's just another way that you can like yeah i'm gonna find this and then i'm gonna give my uh savala shroud i believe yeah yeah shroud. shroud and and that is really good when you're trying to protect her it's just a really underrated card in my yeah. opinion Very. and this card when i first started playing magic i dumbly thought it was bad but but it is not bad let me let me just say that now. Uh, crop Rotation. For one green is an instant. Uh, uh, when you play Crop Rotation, you have to sacrifice a land. Uh, search your library for a land card and put that land to play. Shuffle your library afterwards. So you might be asking, so what land would you look for? Uh, very powerful ones. That Christian will cover next. <laughs> <laughs> and the last random card in here, which... Never thought I would see it in CDH play, but it is a questing beast from a Throne of Eldraine, actually. For two generic mana and a green green, 
It is a legendary creature beast. It has vigilance, death touch, and haste. Questing beasts can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. And then, whenever Questing Beast deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. And it is a 4-4. Four four. <sighs> that is a lot of text on a 4-mana creature. It a lot of good text that only a has lot upside. Of, <laughs> a lot of good text. And I believe if we were joking about this last night about, like, okay, so you have a giant finale and, and you attack. What if someone fogs? And then Christian was like, Questing Beast. Yeah. And because Questing Beast says, combat damage can't be prevented by creatures you control. And it's just that, that like sweet little like niche thing on this one card is just like, oh yeah, that does do that yeah. thing. Make so. it, making, your, making your creatures unfoggable, I mean, I think that's CDH worthy. I think it is In a for big sure. mana deck like this, so. Yeah, it's, it's just really good. And uh, next we're going to cover some of the utility lands uh, of the deck. So uh, what we're... What are some cards that like we would look with a crop rotation? So some of the important lands, and I think the first one will be very obvious, mm -hmm. so we'll get it out of the way. And that's Gaia's Cradle. It's a legendary land. Tap, add green mana to your mana pool for each creature you control. Just very good. I mean, you're making a lot of creatures in this deck, and it's just a valuable land. Really bad in turn one, but good any other turn of the game. I mean, mm -hmm. it's only gonna it's only gonna produce you more mana as the game goes along. Very, very powerful land, and Again, one of the things that you might crop rotation for. Mm -hmm. This next one, I think, is pretty valuable. Although I don't think the situation comes up a lot, I think it could. Mm -hmm. And this next card is Homeward Path. So it's a land that taps for a that taps for a colorless, and then each player gains control of all creatures he or she owns. So let's just say someone takes your Salvala and stops you from going off. Well, we're gonna go ahead and tap that. I'll take my Salvala back. Mm -hmm. And again, um, one of the most played cards in this format in the blue decks is Peregrine, or not Peregrine Drake. Um, what is that called? The Drake that you you, you exchange. Oh, Peregrine for, Drake. That's not Peregrine Drake. No, no Peregrine Gilded Drake. Drake. Gilded Drake. Gilded yeah. Drake. I just yeah, uh, Gilded Drake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Gilded Drake. I mean, Gilded Drake's one of the most popular blue creatures. So yeah, it comes down. It takes yourself on. It's like, oh, well, that feels bad. Well, I'll crop rotation and grab a homeward path. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. And yeah. we're going to get roasted for saying Peregrine Drake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, besides the point, the last one that you might search for is Wirewood Lodge. Mm -hmm. It's a land. It taps for one carless, but it has green and a tap to untap target elf. Saval is an elf. Oh. So you might just, you just untap her. Mm -hmm. And so we're running, we're running kind of low on time at this point. So we'll go ahead and power through this, this last section. We're going to move to the outro. So Christian. Why play Savala? Put it simply, fast-paced, big mana, fun wins. Big mm -hmm. mana quickly. Yeah. Fast wins. Those are the the easiest ways I can describe it. And like, she's very very fun. And while you're not gonna you're not gonna do a whole lot of interacting, which some people don't like that, but I really mm -hmm. like just going off and putting my cards on the table and saying, okay, I'm gonna make a lot of mana. I'm going to try to win, and you have to stop me. Whew. I think that's fine. And so we want to mention that the deck list is in the description box below. And mm -hmm. so our favorite parts of the episode that we, we always joke about. We love all the parts of these episodes. But oh, yes. <laughs> the part that we always itch, itch to talk about, our anime suggestion of the week. Woo. And our anime suggestion of this week is a seasonal anime that we're watching right now. Mm -hmm. And... As of this episode going up, there'll be six episodes out. We've just finished the fifth episode, and it just came out uh, Thursday. And mm -hmm. this episode, this anime is called Somali and the Forest Spirits. Mm -hmm. So, just to touch on it a little bit, and I'll, I'll let you give your opinion. Mm -hmm. This anime follows two characters named a little girl named Somali and a forest golem who does have a name. They just call him Mr. Golem most of the time in the yeah. anime. And they're on this journey, they're journeying together, and they're trying to find humans. And in this world, humans are pretty much, they're extinct for the most part. Yeah, uh, just about. The monstrous people, you know, the humans turned on them and the monstrous people were a lot stronger and pretty much killed all the humans. Yeah. And so, I was wondering, why, why, uh, what do you think about this anime? Like, how has it made you feel? What are, what are some of your feelings? And is there anything that you want to talk about in this anime? This... 
this anime is like really cute. I like like I love Somali and actually I think one of my favorite characters is the golem. Yeah. Just um because it is stated as most golems stereotypically they don't eat, they don't sleep, they don't have yeah, they're exactly they're emotionless. So it, it it's interesting when you say, yeah, this golem's helping this girl find humans, and it's like, huh. That is interesting. Why would the golem care? Yeah, it's in like he plays coy and kind of acts like he doesn't understand emotion, but it's very obvious that like he's learning how to have emotion. He's learning how to like love Somali and how mm-hmm. to like best take care of her. Mm-hmm. You know, another little thing we wanted to highlight. This this excites the JoJo and me, and when I told Aspen he was really excited. The voice actor that does the golem is Jotaro from part three of JoJo, his Japanese mm-hmm. voice actor. And his name is Daisuke Ono, a phenomenal voice actor. Phenomenal. He he brings this golem to life perfectly. And yeah. it's like it's like Jotaro, but if Jotaro had no emotions, it was kind of very literal about stuff. Yeah. So good. It fits the golem so well. And so, yeah, this really cute. It was it was great. I love the story. I love what's going on. There are some some like really feel goods and then some really sad sad moments so far. As of recording <laughs> this episode, we're on like a really intense scene where <sighs> stupid harpy. <laughs> but I mean, I guess I guess what she's trying to do is to save her person, but it's like no, it can't. You'll happen. see. Yeah. It's it is it is great and you will fall in love with it. And I think so. I've fallen in love with it because it's like, you mentioned this to me. It's like, yeah, I'll give it a watch. And then I start watching. I was like, wow. Yeah, we're uh, we're just trying to find like shorter animes that are either seasonal or have, you know, maybe a season of 12 episodes to just watch and mm-hmm. like kind of expand our horizons because while we like watching long anime, I know you're working on One Piece and we've got JoJo that yeah. we watch. I mean, these are very time-consuming long animes, and sometimes it's nice just to sit down and say, okay, this seasonal anime is probably going to go 12 episodes, and this one happened a couple seasons ago, and this was 12, and it just feels good to sit down and watch the anime for about a week and see the episodes and kind of yeah. grow that emotional connection with with the anime. And Somali and the Forest Spirits, is it's, it's very cute, and, you know, just, just to watch it and see the golem alone... Mm-hmm. How he grows to learn and what he does to do for Somali is it's really cool. It's, it's really awesome. Probably it's very wholesome. And mm-hmm. you know, there's some tense moments in the anime. Mm-hmm. And I mean it's tear jerking, and this isn't one of those animes that I feel like it's gonna end a certain way. And the golem said something in episode four oh, that that's it's right. like uh... Like, so we avoid doing spoilers yeah. in these episodes, but you'll see in episode two, something is established about the golem that is like why he is doing this and trying to get her to humans mm-hmm. is so important to him. All I have to say is prepare yourselves for, for a really good anime. Yeah, it's really good. You know, there's going to be some sad times and I don't know the one that's going to tug at the emotions. And I think that's kind of like the anime we like, the anime that kind of... Mm-hmm. That kind of provokes emotion and makes us kind of feel like sad but happy and yeah you know there's there's some really good times there's some really sad times and we're only halfway through mm-hmm. like like I said once this anim- once this this episode airs on on uh, next Friday mm-hmm. uh, Somali will be halfway done mm-hmm. and who knows what's gonna what's gonna happen from here you know so I think we gushed a little bit as we yeah. always do you know <laughs> our our this is the one time. That we can gush without being judged too harshly by our friends and family. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I think that'll do it for this episode. So, for the Brass Gaming Podcast, I'm Christian. And I'm Espen. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.